Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask an Author. Today I'm very excited to have a sister Big Sky publishing author with me, Grace Nolan. Welcome. Hi Michelle, it's great to be here with you. I'm so excited to find out about your books. Tell me, where did you get your idea for these amazing stories? Well, it really did come in a flash of inspiration. It was when I was outside in the backyard and a flock of rainbow lorikeets flashed past and there were a couple of stragglers. And as I looked up, I thought, this is a fantastic idea to teach children how to subtract by uh, using the rainbow lorikeets as an example. So you could have one leaving the group at a time and then they all come back together again at the end. I and love that idea. Yeah, and that's how it started. And that was the first book that I wrote, 10 Lively Lorikeets. It's actually the third book in the set of three in the series of one to 10 and back again, but it was the actual first book that I wrote and it's full of Australian native birds. Oh my goodness. I was at a school visit yesterday and we were talking to the kids about Australian animals. And there's just something about Australian animals, especially for Aussie kids, that just yeah. fires their imagination. So that's yeah. amazing. Tell me about the other two books as well in the series. Well, the other two books are, book one is 10 Naughty Numbats, and that's about teaching children or helping children to count to 10. And book two is 10 Bush Babies, and that introduces the concept of addition. And 10 Lively Lorikeets is the third book, and it introduces the concept of subtraction, but very subtly. That's amazing. Do you have a teaching background? What was it that led you to write these books, which are entertaining and educational at the same time? Thank you. Yes, I do have a teaching background. I've been teaching for over 30 years, uh, uh, children of all levels. And in that time, I, well, children are one of my biggest inspiration for my stories. And throughout that time, I noticed that children, even in secondary school, some of them were struggling with very basic literacy and numeracy. And I've always looked at ways to help them with that. And this was an idea that I felt could really help them at the very beginning of their learning about numbers. And I thought if they could get a really solid foundation, they've got that to build on uh, to learn those more difficult concepts later on. Wow, that's so amazing. I mean, I'm a mum of a, a little one who struggles with literacy. So absolutely, these sort of books are just so important, not only um, in the educational sector, but also for mums and dads to have as tools to make reading fun. But at the same time, you know that you're supporting your kids, especially those ones who find it a bit tricky, like Tommy does. But I mean, this author dream, tell me, where did that come from? It, was this what inspired you to be an author or um, have you wanted to be an author for a long time? That's a tricky question. But really, I've wanted, I have been in a way an author for forever, ever since I learned to read and write. I've been writing stories and poems and songs and everything like that. And it wasn't until recent years, though, that I've really been devoting my time to writing because uh, teaching took up all the rest of the time. But I, I still kept writing, even though other people might not have seen it, but I still kept writing. And I think that's what a writer does. You can't help it. You just find yourself jotting things down and you're getting ideas all the time and they're just there all the time. Wherever you are, you're sort of creating. It's just part of who you are. Goodness, I totally agree, totally agree with that. And is children's books your passion or have you written other genres or is there something else that you'd like to have a try at? But children's books are my passion. I do love writing for children most of all, uh, but I do like to write for adults too. I've written um, a memoir and I've also written uh, a journey that I had through um, cancer that I um, went through a couple of years back uh, and things like that. So I do have those things as well. But my, my big passion is children's writing and, and getting things out there that can help them and help them to live a really happy life. Absolutely. And I mean, you're a teacher. 
I'm, I don't have any teaching background. My experience of writing like you has just been because I've always loved making up stories and, and then being a mum and, and, and I guess experimenting on my children, <laughs> like a mad <laughs> scientist with what works and what doesn't. But with your teaching background, I, I think a lot of people who don't come from the educational space don't kind of understand the importance of picture books in that literacy journey for little kids and and how powerful they can be so what is your take on you know the importance of picture books for our Aussie kids? I think you've just said it there Michelle they are so important you can't even really sum up the importance of them because I know for myself the impact they had on me as a child and how wonderful they were when our teachers used to read books to us in the classroom and I've remembered those and, and they had such an impact on me and the way they helped children to, to learn these really difficult concepts in a really fun way and that's what I'm all about, helping children to really love learning and that's what picture books and all books do really. So uh, it's just part of that, that wonderful thing about loving to read. And, and if children are having trouble with something, give them a book, present them with something and, and help them to work through it that way. So it's really fun and they don't feel that it's learning at all. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, coming from mum of three boys, if they figure out that you're actually trying to teach them something, it's a lot harder than if you're distracting them. And I mean, and picture books are an amazing tool for yes. starting those conversations with kids. But I, I want to find out a little bit more about you and your author brain as well. We know you've got this amazing teacher brain and you've got this innate sense of knowing what kids need. But with the author transition, was that difficult for you, like learning the process of having a book published or was it something that you found exciting and interesting? Well, I, I have found it exciting and interesting. Um, and the writing part of it, I've always done because as we said, it's just, it's in us, isn't it? And you can't help it. You just write and the more you write and practice, the better you get at it. But the actual having a book published is, is another thing. It's another matter. And, and to have it, you know, here, right here in my hand, a book that I can show someone out of an idea that I originally had in my head, that's a really um, amazing thing. It's a great experience. And it was something that was new to me. So uh, I, all I can say is, yes, you have your original idea and you write the text, just as I did. I wrote the text and it's a rhyming text, which I love. And so I've got plenty of rhyme, alliteration, rhythm, and all those things that I really love. But to, to make it happen as a book, of course, there had to be Nancy Bevington, the wonderful illustrator that brought all the pictures to life. And I'll just show you this first one, which straight away, there it is, oh. the playful platypus. <laughs> One playful platter was swimming in a stream. It just brought all the little characters to life. And then it took the team of Big Sky Publishing, a wonderful team, to actually make it happen so that I have these three books in my hand and I can share them with other people. Uh, so it, it's been an amazing experience, really. Absolutely. And how weird is it when you get the book and the, the sample illustrations and you go, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's that's what my words look like because I'm exactly the same as you, I think in words. So it, it's very, really a bit magical and also a little bit daunting for me when yes. I see these superhero illustrators who oh. can, oh. I think what a wonderful talent. You know, I know. These beautiful illustrations by Nancy and I just open, I can open any page and it's just, a work of art. I it mean, it's superb. And I love every single page. And I love the colours and the way it's set out. I've just, it's just been wonderful. Oh my gosh. Now, do you have a favourite out of the three? Out of the three books, uh, well, there are favourite bits in each one, I think. Um, but I really love 10 Lovely Lorikeets because it's all native Australian birds. Actually, I didn't mention that the three books uh, have all native Australian animals in them, 30 altogether. So while the children are learning to count, they're also learning to name and recognise 30 different native Australian animals, which I think is 
is good too. Uh, I think this is just amazing. You put a, a teacher together with an awesome illustrator. Of yeah. course, you're going to get magic, aren't you? Oh, well, my goodness. That is. <laughs> and Nancy's used her imagination and her humour to bring all this to life. And I absolutely, I love every page of these books. I really do. Yeah. Uh, I could open up any, for example, here in the, this little um, tent bush babies where they're lining up to race. <laughs> so so cute <laughs> oh my goodness i think i showed you something in 10 naughty numbers and look at these ones the kangaroos on pogo sticks <laughs> they're gorgeous <laughs> so cute and i love you know i think in this global time it's great that we can have access to all different overseas culture but i love seeing aussie books for aussie kids and that just makes my heart sing when yes. I, when i see that because you know we have got such an amazing aussie culture as well that i think that is underrated and that we forget about and and australian authors have got all these amazing aussie stories that really can kind of be a, a representation of of what it's like to grow up as a kid in Australia so I just I honestly take my hat off to you you've done such a beautiful job tell me a little bit more if if you could give advice to someone who is just starting out or wants to be an author or you could give advice to yourself um when you were started what would that be oh gosh that's a really good question Michelle and I would say don't be put off just keep practicing you will get better at it all the time and you you develop into a great storyteller I think you might have that spark already but it does take practice as well and I think one really important thing is write about what you're interested in and what you're passionate about because if you're passionate about it that will get through to the readers uh, and that way your writing is full of um, beauty and passion. It, some people are writing, you can see that in their stories, they write about things they, they don't really believe in and the writing can sound quite stilted and contrived. Whereas if you're writing from the heart and something that you really want to tell your readers and your audience, then that's going to get through and your writing will be good and interesting. I think that is amazing advice uh, absolutely well put so if anyone watching is thinking that they might like to contact you find out a little bit more about what you do about your memoir or uh, potentially getting the books do you have a website that they can go to i do and it's www.gracenolanauthor.com and i also have facebook grace nolan author uh, so it's very easy to contact me. Excellent. What I'll do is I'll put all those details in the comments. So anyone who's watching, if you wanted to contact Grace to find out more about her amazing three book pitch book series, or to find out a little bit more about um, her as an author or her journey, if you'd like to contact her for school visits or speaking engagements, I'll make sure I've got that link. Grace, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I, it's been an absolute joy. And I just think that you're amazing that you've taken your amazing experience of teaching and turned it into these three gorgeous picture books you should just be so proud of yourself <laughs> Thank you much, Michelle. you're lovely one little thing i didn't mention is that they've been endorsed by australian geographic as well because they're full of australian plants and animals that's so amazing congratulations oh you've done such a great job and what's next for you what do you think you'd like to do next well i'd like to i've got quite a few different ideas to add to this as well but i've got other ideas too to do with just telling a story to children uh, and uh, and also a couple of adult things as well like i say about the memoir and some other folk tales and things like that Wow. Well, I can't wait until we can have another chat when your next book comes out. So thank you again, Grace. Thank you so much for joining me today. And, and I look forward to chatting again soon. Thank you, Michelle. It's been really lovely being with you today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so Bye. much. Bye.